To make a Lottie animation in Flutterflow, first we go to LottieFiles.com. From here we can choose the template, and then we download what's called a Lottie JSON file. Then we pass it into the Lottie animation widget in Flutterflow, and here we have it all done. A running Pikachu! Time to impress your investors! Or more realistically, you're probably going to be handed off a half-finished design from your designer. Or more likely, you're probably going to be taking something from a Google image search and using that as your starting point. But there are a few tricks that you can use to make a completely custom Lottie animation without having to spend any money of it and then incorporate it into your Flutterflow app. And in this video, I'm going to go through the process of tracing out an SVG image and then animating it. The combination of using your own SVGs along with the Flutterflow Lottie animation widget can really open up your application and it can really be quite a lot of fun. So let's dive in. The first thing that I want to say is that when people start to build animations for the first time, they tend to be way too flashy. A mobile application is a mostly static thing. The animations come in when you're doing things like hitting buttons and doing page transitions, looking at loading spinners. They're kind of subtle in the background. They're not happening all the time. So what's really important to remember when you're doing a Lottie animation is consistency. Consistency is a really important fundamental in UI design and your animations need to respect it. Today we'll animate a monster sitting under a tree. Sounds like I violated the consistency rule already, no? And if this were a banking app or a dating app for people with herpes, you'd be right. This is actually an app that we're building in the mental health space. And we have these somatic tools in the apps that make users feel more energized or if they want to relax. And we wanted to convey a sense of comfort. So there is this sort of cartoonish feel with the illustrations. And so let's say that I want to go to, I want to relax and then I go to no sleep, deep rest. This is where my little monster is. And you can see that the animation, the Z's are moving up and down, but the animation is not completely taking over the screen because we want to divert the attention of the user actually to the text so that they can follow the instructions. But it's just really nice to convey this sense of relaxation when you have this little monster sort of chilling by a tree and sleeping with these little Z's. So the animation is really, really subtle and that's what we're going for here. So we're actually bootstrapping this particular project. And so we kind of have to grab designs from wherever we can at the moment. And we'll hopefully get a designer in later. But for example, I got this little image of a monster from one of my co-founders. I'm not even sure where she got it from, but it's just sort of sitting in this Figma file. So I have to be a little bit creative as to how to make this into an animation. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export the selection. So I can grab this as a PDF, as a PNG file. And what I'll do is I'll throw this into the background remover widget. You can just kind of grab this from somewhere online. I use this one, remove.bg. I really like it actually. It's pretty cool for removing backgrounds. And the next thing that I'll do is I'll crop the image. At this point, I'm gonna use a piece of software called Inkscape. This is a really nice one. It's actually the free version of, or one of the free versions of Adobe Illustrator. So you can basically do anything that Adobe Illustrator can do, but this is totally free. And because I run Linux, I actually have to use uh, software like this. But that's really cool, because it means I don't have to pay anything. And some of these softwares, including Inkscape, are really, really nice pieces of software. Okay, so first I'm gonna import the image. And what I'm going to do is to try to trace the image. And Inkscape has a really cool tool for this. It's called Trace Bitmap. And over here, you can move around. There's different options like edge detection, color quantization, brightness cutoff is normally the best choice for me. And essentially, as you move the threshold back and forth, it's able to pick up more and more of the pixels in the PNG image. PNG is a raster image. It's just a bunch of pixels. And so it's really cool. This thing can just trace it. And then you hit apply, and then you get this SVG version of the PNG image. So I can throw that away. Now things get a little bit tricky here, and this is a fairly complicated image, so it's gonna take me a little bit of time to get rid of all of the little pieces that I don't need and then be able to fill things in. Okay, so Inkscape does take some getting used to, but it's a really, really useful tool. If you just take the time, it's, I mean, a whole design tool, so it's gonna have some kind of a learning curve. But if you can do basic things such as select objects and create Bezier curves and start moving them around, uh, that's all I know how to do in Inkscape. I'm not a designer, but this is a really, really powerful thing. So what I've done is I've created kind of different SVG shapes based off of that trace that I took and then filled in some of the colors that I needed to fill in. 
Now, I did of course have a look at Lottie Labs when I was uh, getting to know how to do these, these uh, Lottie animations. But what it, Lottie Files actually has a paywall. I think it's something like 10 downloads or something like that. I kept hitting this paywall. And it was a bit annoying because when there's a free tool, I really prefer to just be able to play around with the tool and then see features that I can't access until I pay for it. Then it's creating value for me rather than just this sort of rug pull when you're just starting to get used to the, the new platform. So I found this one called Lottie Lab and it's very similar. It has an editor as well for Lottie Files. But the only thing that they do to you if you're on the free tier is they give you a watermark, which is fine. It's not a particularly big watermark. So if that's a really big deal for you or a deal breaker, then Lottie Files is probably the way to go. But if you don't mind having a bit of a watermark, I would play around with Lottie Lab as well. So this is my Lottie Lab editor and I've imported the little monster in here and I've made a few changes to it. And I'm not a designer at all. And there are people who can make designs a million times better than me. But it's really just nice to know some of these basics, you know, because if you just want to move a line or two around or, you know, create this little Z effect, it's really cool to be able to do that yourself. Or at least to understand what the designer gives you if you have a designer on your team. So, for example, uh, this little Z, what I've done is I've set it up to get bigger and then get smaller again along the timeline. So it has this effect of sort of appearing and then disappearing. So I can play the little animation and the Z gets bigger and smaller. Another thing I've done is I've actually started changing the size of its mouth. And that I can do because I navigate to this path element because an SVG is just made up of a whole bunch of different paths. And of course, you know, you can zoom into an SVG as, as far as you want or as far as it will allow you. It will always be a perfect straight line and it won't appear pixelated. And the reason that it can do that is because it's based on this concept of paths. And so I have like a Bezier curve tool here, for example, and I can move the image around and start making it bigger and smaller and changing its shape at different parts along the timeline. And then the Lottie Lab will um, interpolate the values so that it looks very smooth. And it does take a little bit of practice, you know, but this is a very simple animation and I'm just gonna leave it there and pop into the application because we can always improve on these things later. Okay, so I'll just clean this up and then we'll go to export the image. And so the Lottie files come through as a JSON file. And this is a file that you want to include in your app bundle generally, and unless it's going to be very dynamic, it's better to download the whole file and then uh, give it to Flutterflow directly. So over here in Flutterflow, generally a good practice is to add a container first when you're going to create a Lottie image and that helps to bound it a lot more easily. Uh, we'll look for the Lottie files widget, Lottie animation, here we go. And this is where we just knock in the JSON so there could be a JSON on the web and Lottie Files and Lottie Lab will actually host the JSON for you, but the animation is going to work faster if you bundle the JSON file with the app itself. And that's no big deal because it's not going to be that big of a size. So we go for asset and I find my JSON. Um, I've already uploaded it. Uh, so here it is in Flutterflow. And of course you can loop the animation uh, or just once or boomerang it, auto animate, you can change the width. There's various things to just kind of play around with. One thing we have here is also frame rate. So we can get quite specific about how many frames are gonna be in the animation before it starts looping over itself again. Thanks so much for watching the video all the way through. If you're finding the content helpful, do please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you're interested in working with me directly, just visit keely.studio to find out the different ways that we might be able to collaborate. I'll see you next time. Bye.